We're back. Uh, in this session, we got Aparna, head of RevOps for Flowcode, and she's going to be talking on startups need a RevOps kickstart. So uh, the floor is yours. Look forward to hearing this one. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me. So I'm Aparna. I'm the head of revenue operations at Flowcode. Flowcode is a conversion suite that empowers brands and businesses to instantly convert their offline consumers and fans into customers uh, with friction-free magical experience yielding direct conversion. So first-party data and insights similar from what they can see online marketing channels, now you can see it offline uh, through a unified end-to-end -end platform built for teams. And I'm really excited to help them grow. So that's a bit of my background and, and where I'm working now. Um, so yes, it's called Flow Code. I'm the head of revenue ops there. An interesting fact about me is I was once in a Bud Light commercial. It was a Halloween commercial about zombies. So um, yeah, if you Google Bud Light zombies, you can find me in that commercial. <laughs> Awesome. So the origin, um, I've worked at New York's hottest startups and I've built RevOps from the ground up at Series A to C companies. Um, I've worked at some amazing, amazing startups in different industries, but all technology and all fast paced, intense growth environments. So I've worked across different industries, biotech, education technology, cybersecurity, and now I'm in ad technology. But the truth is there's many common themes across these industries. And as a revenue operations uh, expert, more often than not, I find myself positioned as a confidant to my sales staff. I find myself lending a helping hand or a kind ear to sellers. And in all of these spaces, I position myself to ease their pain and um, solve their problems. Uh, I usually make some friends along the way as well. Um, so some of the common pain points that I've heard, selling is hard. Uh, it's painful and isolating. Um, and things are constantly changing fast. Um, and people are always doing the most. So what do I mean by that? Selling is hard at startups. Early stage companies are not the incumbent solutions, and they usually have to outseat competitors to prove value in a new space. And it's usually not budgeted. Um, brand recognition is a groundswell, and that takes a lot of time to build. But seller goals are unrelenting, and sellers are usually remote and located all around the country. So they're not organically looped into, into company updates or water cooler discussions. Um, also, things are constantly changing. So decisions made last week may not pertain to new conditions this week. Remote employees can feel a sense of whiplash and companies are still figuring out their stride and their place in the market and their target persona. And then people are doing the most. So employers are often overburdened, performing multiple jobs in multiple arenas. Uh, so you could have a seller with a law degree helping out with NDA language, or you could have an engineer leading uh, project management and board presentation. In short, uh, it's all hands on deck and there's many uh, concurrent initiatives and starts and stops. So. It's important uh, that revenue operations is a key early hire. If you invest in operations early, uh, you kickstart analy analytics and enablement, you can really help employees wear less hats. Uh, so what do I mean by this? Uh, investing in operations early means you can streamline some of these workflows. I joined Flowcode very early stage, so I'm able to implement the infrastructure and set the go-to-market team up for success. Uh, we look at the chaos and try to implement long-term, scalable, flexible solutions. So an example could be sales technology. If I'm implementing, integrating, and training people on sales technology, I can help get the sales teams the leads that they need and the messaging that they need to hit our targets and then build their pipeline quickly. Uh, I also want to implement the infrastructure to track that pipeline and make sure it's where it needs to be. So kickstarting analytics and enablement, uh, sellers want to know where they stand and how they can improve their pipeline performance. Setting achievable goals and KPIs and empowering sellers with the line of sight into how they're performing will get them laser focused on hitting their quotas. So communicating wins and improved team performance uh, broadly gets the momentum going and the excitement level up. So at root, sellers are competitive and they want to win. It's important to establish the perspective, uh, a prescriptive methodology to boost, their to boost their progress. And then finally, to help employees wear less hats. Um, so 
I'm tasked with hooking the sellers up with everything they could possibly need to hit the ground running. So this means an easy CRM process, not overburdening them with data entry, seamless activity logging, and transparent pricing. So I want to help reps get meetings and tell them how to strategically attack their targets so they're not wasting time on administrative tasks. Um, it's also good to out, outsource research opportunities when possible. So for instance, uh, I hired an ADR firm, uh, DataBeast, and they're helping us with our uh, GDR research activities. Awesome. <clears throat> so in practice, uh, when you get to a startup, develop your roadmap and stick to it, but always keep three things in mind. One, interview the sellers to identify their pain points and game plan to hook them up, build relationships. Two, build communication and transparency through metrics, training, and setting achievable KPIs. And then three, helping people focus on what they do best is my job. So first, I always interview key stakeholders to understand their pain points and to develop a prioritized project plan uh, to solve for these issues. So this could be related to comp uh, their compensation, their territory, pricing, or literally anything else. Um, I develop relationships with these sellers and let them know that I'm here to help. Um, I also find mentors within the organization. So I have a really strong mentor here at Flowcode in Jim Norton. Uh, he's the chief revenue officer here and has a really strong strategy and tons of experience. So I'm really happy to support him. Uh, and I worked with Heidi Thompson, the VP of revenue operations at Uncork. Um, and I just learned so much from her, as well as many of the other leaders that I've supported through uh, the past. Um, I think the job of my mentor and, and bosses is to help putting pressure on roadblocks and gathering consensus so that we can execute on the initiatives that we're planning. Um, Okay, so building communication and transparency through metrics, training, and achievable KPIs. So over-communicate. Send summaries of meetings and emails. Uh, project plan documents with assigned comments. So you can assign tasks to people and make sure that you have visibility into that. Um, have recurring meetings to hold people accountable as well. Develop KPIs and metrics that are visible and transparent across the org. Uh, one thing to note is fashion is never finished. So once you launch an, launch an initiative, keep checking on it and training people, retrain people, uh, show analytics throughout the team broadly. Um, you know, make it very visible what we're working on and what's going on on the ground. And at root, uh, RevOps job is to help people focus on what they do best. Um, so RevOps helps others and companies succeed and helping people is my main motivation. Uh, that's why I took this role. And it makes me feel great to cut huge bonus checks for top sellers or to receive a shout out and an all hands meeting because I made someone's life a little bit easier. Um, if we optimize and technologize admin work for sellers, they can focus on what they do best, which is closing deals. So the key takeaway here, uh, to find a form that accommodates the mess, that is the task of the artist now. So that's a Samuel Beckett quote. Um, I think that that really encapula encapsulates uh, RevOps at startups because um, really you're entering a place where a lot of different initiatives are happening and uh, a lot of people are doing many things at the same time. And uh, you have to streamline it and make processes and get people aligned to that. So, um, yeah, that's that's uh, why I do RevOps. And it's it's really fun to, you know, combine art and science and, and execute on, on your vision. Cool. So I could open it up for questions. Awesome. <laughs> we got a few. So we have five minutes. We'll see if we can uh, field what we can in the time. Um, I think you should be able to see this one here, but Courtney asks, would love to know how you prioritize projects in such a high-paced environment with constantly changing objectives. Thanks, Courtney. So that is an excellent question. Um, it's honestly, there's so much going on all the time. So developing a project roadmap is something that I take very seriously. So 
when I come into an organization, I interview sellers as well as other stakeholders to really identify the pain points that they're experiencing and try to uh, put those into projects that I can execute on. So for an example, um, we could say, hey, the legal red line process is taking a long time um, and we don't have a standardized platform for that. So at Flowcode, we have Ironclad. Um, so it's really training people on how to use that contract management system and making sure that they're leveraging it to its best of its features and capabilities. Um, so implementing that tool was on the project roadmap as that was a recurring theme from the sellers. So gathering these projects and then putting them into uh, like, you know, I, I use um, today I use uh, monday.com, but I've used Rike, Asana, um, just putting those into your roadmap and then sticking to that roadmap, you know, and obviously you can prioritize and reprioritize as things come up, but making sure that like, you know, if any new initiative is put onto that roadmap, um, that means something at the bottom of the roadmap is getting kicked off and making sure that you're communicating that through all of your stakeholders. Awesome. Uh, we got, let's see if we can have enough time for a few more here. Um, put this one on. Would also love to hear your strategies to ensure adoption of these initiatives. I Yes, thank you. That's a really good question. So getting adoption of my initiatives um, can definitely be a challenge, right? As we're rolling new features out as a RevOps organization on a very regular basis, you know, you want to make sure that people are taking the things that you do and putting them into action. So, you know, when it comes to implementing technology, um, people should, uh, what I do is make sure that I get in front of them on a regular basis. These things are really everboarding. There is no uh, end to the project, really, especially if it's going to be a long-term, sustainable, repeatable, scalable system. You really have to work these initiatives into people's day-to-day. -day. So what I usually do is get in front of them, do trainings. If people are having problems with tool adoption, uh, making sure we have one-on-ones where I do, you know, more of a deeper dive into what could be the problem and why they're not getting usage out of the tool that I'm um, pushing forward. Awesome. And I think we have time for, for one last one here, which is from Matthew. So how do you develop uh, the project roadmap after you interview the sellers? Oh, okay. That's a really good uh, follow-up question. So you know, I'm interviewing the sellers and I'm getting their pain points. I really rank it by common threads. So is this a problem for one person or is it kind of a systemic issue across the whole organization? And then like just trying to think of like the revenue impact of something like uh, like that. So it's like, OK, if red lines are taking a really long time, um, what does that mean for our bottom line? Like that's going to make our sales cycle longer and maybe we won't hit our number this quarter. So that's clearly an urgent issue. And if it's happening like through multiple stakeholders through the interview process, um, I'll make sure to prioritize that, you know, make sure that it's, uh, you know, the number one thing that we work on. So um, really it's by consensus. Awesome. Um I think that, uh, that's it on the question front. Any, uh, we got uh, right at time, we got a minute. Uh, obviously, if anyone wants, uh, connect with Aparna on LinkedIn, uh, ask any follow on questions. And uh, unless any closing thoughts, uh, we appreciate everything. Thank you so much. All right, have a great day.